Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. This is going to be a Let's Experience Stardew Valley. So as you know, this playthrough is going to be all about looking at the media psychology behind Stardew Valley, what this game does for its players, uh, our minds, our hearts, our overall sense of well-being, or even our mental health. So I wanted to go ahead and bring up my old save file here, uh, my only one. I did put a little bit of time into this. I think that's 51 hours and 44 minutes into my um, file here for Eudaimonia Farm. So I want to go ahead and jump in. It's been a little bit since I have played it, um, just because I've, I've gotten really distracted with other games and a lot of life stuff. Um, but I just remember how useful this game was when I was going through a lot during grad school um, and my anxiety was was going up because you know all the responsibilities in grad school so I wanted to really revisit it no I don't want to go back to bed I wanted to revisit it so that I can share it with everyone so anyways welcome to my home in Stardew Valley uh, on Eudaimonia farm if that name sounds familiar it's because I, I made this save file just as I was getting into media psychology and I immediately loved the idea of eudaimonic well-being and so I wanted to name my farm after that because I wanted to, I guess, keep that as a reminder of why I was playing this game and what was really important to me. Anyways, so one of the first things I want to say, as you can see, I've spent a lot of time uh, customizing my room, you know, picking the right wallpaper, positioning things exactly where I was like, okay, these colors go good here, uh, those photos go good up there, this rug is nice here, and I, you know, this globe's right here, even though I like this, isn't this the moon table? I seem to remember. Uh, I like the moon underneath it, but I love the globe, so that was such a conundrum for me. Anyways, so the media psychology I want to bring up is the fact that Stardew Valley is so highly customizable, it's, it's really awesome. Uh, that kind of high customizability of a game really does contribute to our sense of ownership in the game, our ability to, I'm just going to check the TV while I talk, our ability to um, express ourselves, to understand ourselves better, kind of an exploration into self-definition. Uh, just all those minutes, all those maybe hours we might spend um, making sure that everything looks just right, that represents us and our sense of self, that really does help our well-being. Research has shown, shown that both in real life and in virtual spaces, we do get that kind of boost from being able to um, keg. I know keg. From being able to express ourselves and to think about ourselves, to have some self-experience um, and when we're decorating and setting things up. So if you find yourself spending a lot of time, even if you feel like you're wasting time customizing your home in Stardew Valley, don't worry. You're not wasting your time. You're just trying to experience yourself. You're trying to uh, express yourself and invest more in the game and and just uh i guess really put down some some understanding of who you are not only in the game but you know in life as you can see i i see myself as somebody who likes books and artwork and and you know just curiosities and i'm i'm not afraid of of a couple of plush toys i i do like stuffed animals um and you know this is how i represent myself and it makes me feel good to load into the game and see like wow you know this is all this is all me you know i did this and it really does represent who i think i am anyways so getting into the actual gameplay i'm a little embarrassed my farm isn't the the most neat or the most interesting i have some friends who have some really really interesting well put together uh farms but you know what i'm, I'm happy i'm happy with it i think it, it does the job I'm gonna just some, pick up some, whoop, if I can remember how to pick stuff up. So right now, right out the gate, this is a great game because every morning, whoop, every morning in the game, you wake up and you can do, excuse me, <laughs> uh, you can do exactly what you want to do. Like I'm gonna go make sure that my cows are happy, give them a little pet. Oh, I might go and just, whoop, yes, that one's named Bambino, um, and just make sure that they're well fed and everything. You know, this sense of freedom in the game. I get to decide what my day looks like. I have all this autonomy, all this agency 
these are some really uh, big keywords in media psychology when it comes to why we pick media. Why, why do we play this game? It's because we get that boost of, I get to do what I want in the moment, which, I mean, that could sound a little like selfish, but how often do we get that in our lives? You know, whether you have to go to school or go to a job, most of our time, or if you have a lot of responsibilities with family, most of our time is spent making sure that everything else is taken care of. And yes, I mean, I do have responsibilities in here. I have to you know, uh, feed my animals. I have to pick up the eggs and stuff like that. But they're the responsibilities we choose for ourselves. If we don't like it, we don't have to have chickens. You know, we could uh, invest in something else. Um, and so what we really get from this game is we get to fulfill that psychological need to just do what we want to do, that autonomy, that agency. And that's really useful for any of us, uh, including myself, that we feel maybe a little, a little pinched, a little um, confined by our responsibilities in everyday life. Um, we feel that maybe, you know, we spend a lot of our time uh, fixing everything else up in our lives, making sure we're doing what our bosses say, that we're, um, you know, being good significant others or family members. I was conducting a field study the other day and I found this specimen. I hope you find it as interesting as I did. Thank you, Demetrius. Very nice. Um, I'm just gonna sell some stuff. I know I don't have to, I, well, keep the bream. I'm just gonna sell it because I tend to get a lot of these things all at once, so it's okay. Um, anyways. Um, so this is really useful and was super useful for me when I was in grad school. I was able to take a break from having to feel all the pressure of doing the research and writing the papers and lesson planning. I was in grad school for education. I had to do a lot of lesson planning, a lot of student teaching. There was a lot of responsibilities, um, both to my supervisors, my mentors, my uh, my fellow students, student teachers, um, but the students I, I was t I was teaching, I had a lot of responsibility to them to make sure that I was doing everything I could for them too. I mean, I was getting my degree, but I also had to make sure that they were getting a good education while I was learning how to teach. Um, oh, I don't know if these traps actually go here. I remember when I stopped playing this, I was like, wait, where do I put these? Are they lobster traps? I don't think lobsters are in rivers, so I don't know what I was thinking. I probably have to put those up the ocean. I think they were just, the ocean was too far and I didn't want to. Anyways, um, so this game was super helpful for me because I was able to just for 10, 20 minutes at a time every day when I could get myself to have some, you know, personal time um, that wasn't dedicated to work or homework or lesson planning. Um, that's nice. Um, I was able to decide what I was going to do for the day in Stardew Valley. You know, I didn't have to think about anything else and that was highly therapeutic and it really helped with my recovery, work strain recovery, work stress recovery, uh, recovery from emotional labor. Being a teacher is, it does take a lot of emotional labor. Um, so thank your teachers <laughs> if they, you know, were nice to you about, um, if they were nice to you and actually labored emotionally. It's okay to get a moderate amount of sunlight, just don't get burnt. That's so funny, Haley was just talking about getting a tan. Um, anyways, um, so apart from that, another thing that really helps with the recovery experience here is the fact that it's just so peaceful. It's so peaceful. Uh, one thing I did want to talk about before I get uh, too far into the game, um, was the, I wanted to assess my mood before really engaging with the game. Uh, my mood going into this, though I think it's a little light now, my mood has actually changed already. I'm a lot peppier and happier right now. My mood going into this, I was pretty stressed. Uh, just a lot of work stuff coming up uh, that's been weighing on my mind. And I guess I was feeling that kind of pinch from responsibility. But walking into this, I feel automatically kind of freer, kind of able to do what I want. Um, even though, yes, it's already 4 p.m., 4 PM <laughs> so I, I do feel a little bit of a time crunch. Um, I also did want to incorporate into these videos um, some mood management theory. Um, so I'm actually going to take a moment right now to talk about mood management and how different media can help us um, manage our moods, you know, to decrease the time we spend in negative moods and help us increase the time we spend in positive moods. 
Aww. Poor David. Um, so for mood management, and if you've seen my Animal Crossing video, you might recognize these levels I'm about to talk about. Each piece of media has four distinct factors that makes it particularly um, either good for recovery or good for, um, I guess, challenges, emotional and cognitive challenges, depending on what you're in the mood for. I am not in the mood for an emotional or cognitive challenge right now, so this game is actually, this game is actually really good for my mood management at the moment. So these levels are, and I'll have them on screen here, these levels are excitatory potential. So excitatory potential is the potential of a piece of uh, media to get us kind of excited and, and you know, like, wow, what's going on? You know, kind of action, thriller. This isn't very exciting. Every once in a while we might, might get a little something, maybe if we go to the mines or if there's a bit of, you know, we just discover something new about a character that's like alarming or, you know, something that's interesting. I would say that this is more towards the calm and restful. Uh, end of the spectrum for sure. The next one is absorption potential. Absorption potential is all about how much a game can pull you out of your current mood, how absorbed you can get in it uh, so that you can um, focus on the game and in the game world. I haven't, I don't know if this bathhouse can be fixed or something. I don't know. Um, I'm still learning. Anyways, um, I think that this game has actually a pretty good amount of absorption potential. I do feel um, pulled into this game where it's like, yeah, I'm investing my time. I'm doing a lot of kind of planning in it, a lot of running around. Um, and so I do feel like it has a pretty good absorption. I kind of forgot everything that was going on in my mind before I was playing this. So I think that's the evidence for it. Uh, the next level would be semantic affinity. So semantic affinity is how closely this game, this piece of media, relates to our everyday life. How much does it make us think about our everyday responsibilities and stuff? I don't have a background in farming. I don't live in a small town. I live in suburbia where nobody talks to each other. Um, uh, so this is actually pretty far from my everyday life. Uh, and that's actually helpful. Sometimes you don't want to be reminded of your everyday life. If I was a farmer and I thought my job was really stressful, I might not want to play this game as a form of recovery or relief because it'd be about farming and I'd be like, oh goodness, I have to do this now, I have to do that. It would just remind me too much of my everyday stresses. Uh, but this doesn't, this isn't it for me because I'm an office worker, so I don't have to worry about these things ever. Now I just have to worry about doing what's um, what the game wants me to, which is doesn't remind me of my everyday life. Anyways, next one is, and the last one, is hedonic valence. So this is how cheerful the game is, as opposed to sad, tragic, or scary, suspenseful. This game is almost completely hedonic valence. There are times when it is sad. I'd say even the, the beginning of this game was pretty sad. Can you find fish in here? Um, the beginning of this game was kind of sad, and sometimes you can actually get, um, a situation with characters that can get pretty sad, but for the most part, I'd say like 90% of the time, you're pretty high, you're in high hedonic valence. It's very easy to just be cheerful and to not worry about other things. So those are the levels for this game. So that means that they have particular emotional benefits for us, uh, and our mood. Um, depending on your mood going into this game, these levels might not be what you want. You might want something that's more, I'm just going to go to bed and start the next day. Um, these levels might be, you know, um, not what you're looking for. And that's perfectly fine. That's because every individual person has their own individual relationship with every piece of media. We're all so unique. And our moods can be really complex and layered. You might feel like, oh, I want to play Animal Crossing, which is quite similar to this, but not Stardew Valley or vice versa. So not all games can be lumped uh, into particular like genres of levels. I, I don't think not general genres. But you could play this uh, for its specific combination of levels that work with you. Um, anyways, so moving on. I wanted to also talk about the flow of this game, okay? It's going to be a beautiful sunny day. Nice. The flow of this game, I think, is wonderful. 
good humor today. I think maybe if I wanted to, I could go to the mine, but I don't know if I want to right now. Um, oh, hello. 500. Agricultural fund to help you continue your good work. Oh, I'm getting subsidized. Nice. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I should... No, uh, I'll just put the sweet peas in there. No. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to sell these for now, just because I don't really have any plans for them. Um, anyways, the flow of this, like, especially talking about the mines, so maybe I should go to the mines. Just, oh, I can take the trolley. Um, what was it? <laughs> um, I'm getting my working memory is so frantic right now. It's like trying to remember research and play this game and everything. Uh, the flow of this game is really good because... Uh, it doesn't start off too hard. It, as you get more skilled, as you unlock more, you're able to do more, um, more challenging things. And the mines is a really good example of it. You can start at levels, you know, you do start at level zero, and then you get better and better. You find more stuff, you buy more stuff, and then you can get all the way there. Just so that I can talk without being too hectic, I'm gonna start off pretty low. Ooh, what the? Hello? Ooh, hello. I didn't know that they would populate we're like things right there. That's not nice. Okay. Now it's been a while. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. If I make mis like a rookie mistake, it's because it's been a couple months since I played this. Anyways, um, I wanted to talk about the flow because I think the flow of this game is also really good for recovery. It. You feel like just a little bit challenged, you get some mastery, some competence. If you've been feeling in, in real life that maybe you haven't been very masterful or competent in everyday things, like I know when I've had a bad day at work or, in, or, or anything really, where I felt like maybe I was like subpar that day, um, it really does feel good to come home and it's like at least I'm good at Stardew Valley, which which sounds kind of sad and <laughs> But it actually does give you some psychological benefits that you're then kind of reassured that you're not like a complete You know nimcompoop you can you can figure things out. You can be good at things, you know growth mindset You know, it'll take time and practice like I wasn't I didn't know what I was doing when I first started Stardew Valley, but I've gotten pretty good anyways uh, so I think that flow is actually really good, helps us with our self-esteem, our self-efficacy. Um, hopefully I'm not putting too much research down at the bottom. Oh no! Stay away! Okay. Um, hopefully I'm not, you know, like, doing too much with this, but there's just so many good benefits to this game and I just want to share them all. Uh, something else that I thought was super interesting for Stardew Valley was the fact that you can really engage in these... Okay, you can really engage in these. Uh oh, this is an active floor. Um, you can really engage in some parasocial relationships, uh, which is whoop, whoop, oh, which is when you have. It sounds kind of funky when I say it like that, but parasocial relationship. Ooh, excuse me. Parasocial relationship is where you can have a relationship with both media characters, fictional characters. Um, or celebrities on like Instagram and stuff um, that they're kind of you don't actually talk directly to them or they don't really I guess for all intents and purposes exist when they're fictional characters however they exist in your mind and you can develop a kind of relationship to them you care about them you know you've never met your favorite youtuber but you care about them or maybe you have but you didn't you don't have an actual like maybe friendship with them i don't want to assume anything um but you care about them and what happens in their life or in your fictional characters life really does impact you emotionally and you do wish the best for them um, the parasocial relationships that you can have with characters in stardew valley like when you get a boyfriend or a girlfriend um it does help you. Uh, it sounds funny. You think like, wait, I'm getting attached to a fictional character, but I mean, we all do. It's kind of like a natural part of uh, interacting with media. And I don't think it's anything to think to, it's not strange, not unless it's replacing um, actual interaction, human interaction. Um, but I think everybody, you could be very sociable. You can be an extrovert. You're still gonna have a parasocial relationship with a character, a favorite character, or a favorite celebrity. 
um, these things are actually good for us. They, these people, these characters act as role models. Sometimes they act as examples. Uh, according to social cognitive theory, we can learn from them how to handle um, certain obstacles or how to think about life or the world. And those relationships um, can help give us the sense of relatedness and connection to others. They can give us a sense of relatedness and connection to others, which is important for our psychological well-being. Excuse me? Ah! Um, so if you do really find yourself caring for Shane or Harvey or Elliot, that's perfectly normal. It's actually kind of good for you. Just, you know, um, uh, some of the benefits that come with it. Um, Anyways, yes, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and leave the mine, actually. Okay, so yes, I've I've gone through a lot, a lot of research, but hopefully it has been helpful. Um, I know that this game really helped me, and it has helped a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people online talk about the benefits of this game, and so I did want to share the research behind it so that you know it, it's not just you. and. And this game and games like it can be incredibly helpful. Um, so I'm going to do some post-play mood assessment. I think that this is all a part of media mindfulness. We have to be mindful in order to get the most out of our interactions with media. Um, it really helps to be mindful of what our moods are before playing or watching um, and what our moods are afterwards. Um, and so my mood right now is a bit different. Uh, Sure. Um, it is a bit different. I, I do feel cheerier. I feel, I don't know, I feel a little bit freer, a little bit, you know, higher hedonic kind of well-being, uh, which is really nice. Uh, and I do think that the levels that I did talk about for this game really did help me. This was something that gave me that recovery I needed. This, the distraction and detachment from stressors that helped me unwind and relax a little bit. So I'm going to be leaving this game feeling a bit better than I did going in. And I think that's the goal. And what's really good is being mindful of that. So anyways, I'm going to head back home. And while I do, I wanted to go ahead and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I really wanted to share this, so I'm excited I got to play it for this channel. Uh, if you have any other suggestions for games like Stardew Valley, or maybe completely opposite, maybe there's a horror game that really did something for you psychologically and you'd like to see it covered, please, by all means, let me know. I, I love any suggestions on other games that could help us psychologically and emotionally. Oh, my cat. Um, anyway, so thank you so much, and as always, Happy playing!